Hello, sorry I don't have my nice microphone this time. Uh, I'm going to show you how to detect whether or not the mouse is inside a rectangle. And the reason you care about this is because all images are rectangles. So today you're going to learn how to display images so that you can have like a ship image, for example, instead of a circle or a rectangle. But if you want to know, are you clicking inside the ship image? And later on, if you want to know, like, is a ball inside a ship image or like a bullet inside a ship image, then you're going to need to know, uh, is a, a point inside a rectangle? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start from where we left off last time. So I'm going to use this program where we have a ball that kind of bounces around inside this rectangle. And we were detecting whether or not the mouse was inside the ball and turning it green if it was and red if it's not. All right, so let's just make one change. In your own code, why don't you find the line where you're actually displaying your ellipse? On my, on my program, it's line 44. So instead of ellipse, let's make it draw a rectangle instead. So we're still drawing the rectangle at location x, y. Its width and height are still 60 and 60. But that's going to break a bunch of stuff. So let's see what it's broken. So it looks like the bouncing doesn't work anymore. And it also looks like I can have my mouse inside the rectangle, inside the square, but it doesn't detect it. But then sometimes I can have my mouse outside the square and it thinks it's in there. So let me explain what's happening to you. The page I'm about to show you comes from your packet. So when you use the ellipse command, xy you're, is the center of the ellipse. You're saying draw, ellip draw an ellipse centered at xy. When you use the rectangle command, you're saying draw a rectangle that starts with the upper left-hand corner at xy. So that's the first difference. The second difference, well, that one difference is what explains all of the problems. So let's think about it. If for my bouncing code, here I say take the x coordinate and add 30. So that must be the right-hand side of the ellipse and see if that's larger than the right-hand side of the box. So this is for bouncing off the right wall. Well now, let's see, 30, that was the radius of the ellipse. So here it makes sense. If I start here and I go over by 30, there's the right-hand side. For this object, it's got the same diameter. So this is 60, and this is also supposed to be 60. But here, if I start here and go over by 30, I only get halfway. And that's why, when I run my program, you see that it bounces when it exactly halfway hits this right-hand wall. Similarly, uh, if I want to get the left-hand side of the ball, I do x minus 30. That's this code here for the left-hand wall. But if I take x minus 30 here, now I'm off the left-hand side of my rectangle. So the idea is, remember I said you always want to think about this stuff in English? In English, the idea was if the right side of the object is bigger than the right side of the wall or like the, the, sorry, the right wall. <clears throat> so when it was in ellipse, the way you get the right side of the object is you say x plus 30. Now that it's a rectangle, you need a different coordinate to get the right side of the object. So back in your packet again. By the way, you can actually look at this piece of paper in your packet. So here is the picture of what you already know. So the right-hand side is x plus the radius. The left-hand side is x minus the radius. But now if you look at the rectangle, the left-hand side is just x. The right-hand side would be x plus the width. The top would be y. The bottom would be y plus the height. So that's the first change I want you to do. For each of these bouncing statements, go through and make a change. So the new left hand, so this is left side of object, but the left side is no longer x minus 30. Now it's just x. So go through and make all those changes. All right, so I've gone ahead and done that, and now it looks like the bouncing is working. Yep, we've hit all four sides. But the mousing over still isn't working. And the reason why is because we're still we're acting as if there's an imaginary circle centered right at xy. But remember, xy is the upper left-hand corner. So it kind of makes sense. If you move your mouse close to the left, upper left-hand corner and you imagine there's an imaginary circle there, it looks like it's detecting, is my mouse inside that imaginary circle? So there's a totally new approach. Instead of testing the distance from xy, 
we're going to ask four questions. Well, really, we're going to ask two questions. We're going to say, is the x-coordinate of my mouse between the left and right sides of this box? And is the y-coordinate of my mouse between the top and bottom? So let's find in your code where you're doing the collision detection. So find where you're calculating the distance from the mouse and checking if the distance is less than the diameter. We don't want to do any of that right now. <clears throat> Instead, we're going to do this. We're going to ask the question, we're going to say something like this in pseudocode. If, if the mouse's x-coordinate is between the left and right sides of the rectangle, and also, if the mouse, excuse me, if the mouse y coordinate is between the top and bottom sides of the rectangle. So if all that's true at the same time, then it must mean that my, let's see, my mouse x is between left and right, my mouse y is between top and bottom, so it must be that my mouse is on the inside. So that's the statement we're going to now translate into actual Java. So first I want to say, is my mouse x bigger than the left-hand side of my box. So let's look at the box. Here the left-hand side of the box is x. So is my mouse x larger than x? And also, is the mouse x smaller than, what's the right-hand side? It looks like x plus width. But in this case, my width is, where, where's the box I'm drawing? D down here. So my rectangle is 60, so the width is 60. And also, so this covers the, the x-coordinates. Is it bigger than left, and is it smaller than right? And is the y-coordinate bigger than, sorry, is my mouse y-coordinate bigger than the y-coordinate of the box? So that's below the top side. And is my mouse smaller than the bottom, which is y plus the height? So if all four of those things are true at the same time, then I want to fill with a green color. Or you know what I should do? Let's do this instead. I want to make a Boolean variable called isInside, which is false. And then here I'll say, if these things are true, I'll set isInside to be true. So this is sometimes, this is called a flag. The idea is you're just thinking like, yes or no, is this piece of information true? Is my mouse inside the rectangle? So by default, the answer is no, but if these things are true, then the answer is yes. And then down here, I can say, OK, let's, let's look at that variable to decide what to do. If inside is true, then we'll fill green. Otherwise, we'll fill red. But then later on, if I wanted to do something else, I could use that same is inside variable without having to repeat this statement. If you're really fancy, an even better thing to do is replace all of this with your own method. So you could do this, Boolean is inside equals test inside, where you give it the xy coordinates and the width and the height and the mouse x and the mouse y. So this is the method that you would write. And then it would give you back true or false is this inside that rectangle. And that would be an even more direct way of just testing is the object inside. Um, and the inside of this method would be the code that I just cut. Um, only do that if you're advanced, though. All right, so far so good. So let's see if this has worked. Great, this looks like it's working. So what I want you to do now is go down to, oh, I took it out. Um, in yours, you have this. You have public void mouse released. And you still have the old code that detects whether or not the mouse is inside a circle. I want you to replace this with the new test. So, so we want to do essentially the same thing as we've done up here. We want to test, is the mouse in between all of these coordinates? Only we want to do it down here to see, like only do it when the mouse is being clicked. And then use that to increment your bounce counter. OK, good luck. If you've done this, your next step is to, excuse me, is to watch the next video on the piece of paper. Um, so that you can actually make a cool background and a cool bouncing foreground. The only thing I'll say is uh, the video will lead you slightly wrong. I would say instead of using background, go ahead and remove background entirely. Instead, you're going to use an image command. 
where you're going to give it a background image and then say start displaying at upper left hand corner zero zero. Um, so as long as you do this, that will fix some problems that people were having in second block. You can read all about, I mean, you can watch the videos and you should watch the videos, but you can read all about this. Where did I put it? You can read all about this in the packet also. There's a page called how to display an image. So this shows you how to d create a background image. This shows you how to create a foreground image, something that might be bouncing. Um, and then again, there's the video explanation. Good luck, everybody.